Welcome to our first day of Vinyasa. And our theme for this week is a, um, it's resilience. And I've been thinking about that this a lot this week and trying to cultivate resilience as I navigate and as we navigate a lot of changes in, in society and settling into a new normal. Um, a bit of an anti-climax in South Africa. We're coming out of our stage five of the most extreme, um, they say, version of our lockdown, which lasted five weeks. And tomorrow we emerge from that, are liberated from that, only to find that stage four is still ridiculously draconian and limited. Um, and so in times where you feel like there's a lot happening outside of your control, a lot of changes, life throws a lot of stuff at you, one of the most important coping mechanisms and resources at hand is resilience, a bounce back ability in our minds, in our emotions, um, in our habits and how we come to create new habits and new ways to feed us all in the way that we need to be fed and flourish and to flourish. And so on Sunday, we will, at, in the end class, talk more about resilience um, on a kind of a philosophical sense and a, in a in more rounded in way of understanding it and how we react, how we cultivate resilience mentally and emotionally. But in our flow this week, uh, we did this on Tuesday, the theme on Tuesday as well is going to be resilience in the body, how the body can uh, heal, bounce back um, and recover. And the way in which that happens, a primary way in which that happens is through the fascia, um, the, this sheath of um, kind of collagen-like malleable um, substance that lies underneath the skin and it runs through the muscles and organs and in it are the the um, nerve endings and the blood vessels and this sheath covers from the very top of the head down to the tips of the feet front and back it's this massive expanse of our body beneath the skin that is actually mayo fascia and for a long time it wasn't con considered to be very important in terms of building mobility and health um, in in your ability to be mobile in the body but in, mo in more recent years there's been heightened interest and research into it and people have found that for mobility fascia is even more important than muscle um, health and it is also a place because it has so many nerve endings where we absorb stress and we absorb patterns of stress or past injuries and so on. They become absorbed. They can actually be mapped on the body. And um, when you do these advanced kind of scans, they can do now and they can see your fascia. So it's really important and interesting. And we can work with it in our movements. Um, we're going to do a few kind of um, fascia opening movements, not quite as many as Tuesday. Um, and in our flow, we'll do quite a few repetitive fluid movements, all of which help us to work into the fascia. So I hope that you enjoy it. And um, we can begin in child pose at the back of the mat. So um, come to sit near, right near the back of your mat. Oh, and last thing, <laughs> have a strap or a scarf or something nearby, we'll use a strap um, near the end. A strap, I'm gonna use this, so something um, to hook around your feet at the end. So come into your child pose. You can have your arms just comfortably reaching forwards in front of you as you soften your head, let your head be supported on your mat. Soften your face here and close your eyes. As you tune into your breath and let the supportive and restorative structure of the posture allow your mind to become calm and soft and subtle 
as you focus on the breath, you focus on the sensations of your body as you are on your mat this evening. Letting all the distractions around you fade. As you tune into the here and now on your mat and begin to focus more on sensations and rhythm and breath than on thoughts and words. Let go of the stories you may be telling yourself. And this is a key way to build resilience when the stories change and we feel circumstances are out of our control and not to our liking. We can tune out from all of that narrative, because that's what it is, and rather tune into the reality of sensations in the moment. Far more simple, graspable, understandable. And I invite you to start to lengthen your breath and maybe make your child pose a little bit more active as you reach into your fingertips as much as you can now, maybe doming up in the heel of the hand as you press the bum back in behind you. And starting to expand the breath nice and fully, feeling the belly rise and fall, feeling the lungs expand and contract. Nice full breath. Another two or three cycles here in your own time of that breath. And then inhale to lift your head up and come up onto your knees. Have your knees hip width apart, feet back, also hip width apart. And on your next inhalation, stretch out with your left leg, left toes in line with the right knees, arms out on either side. Engage through the glutes and lift through the chest and the belly. We're going into our Parigasana pose with the next exhalation, bringing the right arm overhead, left hand to left leg. And press the chest open towards the front of your mat to get a deeper stretch through the side body. You can sort of play with your neck, the stretch, a gentle stretch in the neck here, using the pose to allow you to stretch and release any tension you may have here. And then exhale to close the body, sweeping your right hand to the right side. Inhale to open up. Maybe do the same thing with the neck here. Parigasana pose is such a lovely way to warm up for a practice or any physical exercise and also if you feel tired sitting at your desk or like your attention is and your focus is waning um it's a nice pose just to get onto your knees on the floor near your desk and do it always safe exhale close the body inhale open we'll be a bit more dynamic here with the breath exhale to close Inhale to open. One more time on each side. Exhale to close. Inhale to open. Exhale, close. Inhale to open. This time as you exhale and close, bring your hands forward. Come into this kind of straddle, half tucking the right toes underneath behind you and then kind of like a half child pose straddle. And make, the, make it nice and active, reaching into the fingertips, look down to the floor, don't strain the neck to look forwards. Another two deep breaths. And inhale to come up into your tabletop, hands under shoulders, knee, um, right knee under hip. Engage the 
horseshoe shape through the scapula and the upper arms. So rotating external rotation through the upper arms and press the floor away. So this is just going to protect your shoulders and help you keep a nice uh, shape, a nice um, strong shape as you inhale and lift up your left leg, kicking it out towards the side. Try and keep it nice and horizontal and really press your hands into the floor so that you don't fall out to the right side. On your next exhalation, kick back. Inhale to kick forwards. Exhale to kick back. Let's do it last time. Inhale forwards. Exhale back. This time as you inhale, press the right toes into the floor, lift up the right leg and draw the left knee to nose and then exhale to kick back into your three-legged dog. So we're near the beginning of our class, so you can come up onto the toes on the right leg, and you can use this as a time to kind of work into the ankle, or maybe even work into the hip on the left side. So try not to make the movement static or forced. Do what you need in terms of movement. And then exhale to draw that leg down and bring the knees down. Inhale to come up and exhale right leg out towards the side. Arms facing down, lock the hips, inhale. Exhale, reach towards the right, left arm overhead. Harugasana, it's about three breaths each side in our first hold. Make you soft. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, left hand out towards the side. Reach into the toes, reverse Paragatana, engage the glutes. Last breath here. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, and let's begin that more dynamic breath. Sweeping the hands forward, inhale, exhale to sweep back, inhale, exhale, inhale, and then exhale to close the chest to the floor, setting yourself up for that sort of half straddle child pose, reaching through the fingertips, keeping that right leg wide and out. You can engage the patella in the right leg. Make sure you aren't hyperextending into the back of the right knee. Last full breath here. Inhale to lift the chest up, hands underneath the shoulders. Engage, press hands into the floor. External rotation, upper arms, and slight horseshoe shape is through the rhomboids and the scapula. And then inhale to lift that right leg up. Try and keep it horizontal. Pause just to get that strength through the arms. And exhale to kick back. Inhale to kick out towards the side. Exhale to kick back. Inhale and forwards. Exhale back. And this is our last one. Inhale forwards, out to the side. Exhale and back. Pressing left toes in towards the floor. Inhale, bring the right knee to nose. Keep the left heel off the floor as you then exhale and come into kind of like a, a soft, groovy three-legged dog opener. Keeping the heel up so you aren't straining into the hamstrings. Maybe just in your own way, moving into your hip, moving into your foot, not worrying what you look like. Just using the expression of the three-legged dog to warm up. And then exhale, both feet to the floor, coming into a down dog. Maybe you need to pedal a little bit, maybe not. Just three breaths here in a way that suits you. Three full expansive breaths. Mm. 
and then inhale to look forward towards your hands. And with our exhalation, we can do those mayor fascia pulses. So I'm not sure if everybody saw on Tuesday, but it's an exhalation to soften and kind of arch through the upper back. Inhale back. It's a movement like that, opening up both the front and the back of the body. So we'll do, let's do a round of 20 in just one round. So inhale to look forwards and then soften your neck. Let's begin. One. Pause. Inhale forwards. Exhale, bring the knees down. Inhale, slide the bum back and lift the arms up. So coming onto your heels. Exhale, bring your hands behind your head. And just at the back of your mat here, press your head into your hands. So open up the chest, press the elbows backwards. Just take a few breaths here, staying exactly where you are, deep, full breathing. Opening the chest, toes are hooked under, last full breath here, inhale, exhale, release the arms and then sweep them forwards and step back into your plank pose. So just take a moment to find your alignment and to feel comfortable and hopefully relatively light in the pose to really activate through the top of the head and out through the back of the heels as you press your thighs together and activate that, that horseshoe shape through the scapula and the upper arms. Same movement as we had in our tabletop variations. Last breath here, inhale. And then exhale, heels out to the right side as you inhale and lift up your left arm. Maybe taking a few Repetitive cycles here with that left arm. And then drawing the left hand to the floor and exhale, heels out towards the left side as you bring the right arm up and wheel that right arm around. Soften and stretch through the neck. And then exhale to close the right hand, bringing heels right, heels out towards the right. And then two options. One is to bring the left foot in front of the right leg, and that will help keep you more stable if the Vashistasana uh, side plank pose does feel strenuous for you. But if you're comfortable with both feet back there, why not give it a go to lift up that top leg. So first thing we'll do is to lift up the top leg, bending the knee and reaching the arm up above. Just another full breath here, inhale. And then on the exhalation, you're gonna kick backwards with that left leg and then reach forwards with the left arm. So you make like a diagonal shape with the left leg and the left hand in relation to the straight vertical line of the right side body. So these cross body stretches, we're gonna do quite a few of them and they're very good for stimulating the fascia. So let's inhale, bring elbow to knee and then exhale, reach out, diagonal shape. Last one, inhale, elbow to knee. Exhale, whoops, kicking the door, <laughs> reaching back. Then inhale and bring your left knee up and draw it forwards to meet the right hand near the front of the mat and then soften into your right knee. Bring both hands on either side of that front foot and then draw your nose to your left knee or even your forehead looking in towards your belly, stretching over the back of the neck and softening the hips. Just a few breaths here. Inhale to lift your head up and then exhale to 
come back into your Ada Hanumasana, so straightening into that left leg, and then exhale to fold in. Inhale to lift up, exhale to come forward, soften into the hips, inhale to reach back, exhale and down. Inhale and up, exhale and forward, inhale and exhale. Do last one like this, inhale and up, exhale and forward, and inhale and back, and exhale and down. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to come forwards, tucking the right toes underneath, stepping up into a low lunge, and then stepping back into your plank. Full breath here, inhale, exhale. Inhale to ready yourself. Exhale, heels to the left side. Come into your Vashistasana on this side. Same thing, the variations from Vashistasana we're about to do, if they're too intense for you, you can always just hang out here with the right foot in front of you to keep your balance. And if not, feet at the back. First stage to inhale and lift up that right knee, drawing the knee up towards the ceiling, reaching forwards. Inhale. Exhale to kick back with the right foot, reaching forwards with the right hand, finding the diagonal shape. Really feeling the activation in this diagonal crossbody line. And then inhale, elbow to knee. Exhale to kick out and reach out. Inhale, exhale. Oops. Inhale. This is the last one. Exhale. Inhale, bringing your right knee up and transferring it forwards. Releasing both hands on either side of the right foot and then softening the hips and bringing forehead to knee or nose to knee. A few soft breaths here. Just allowing that exhalation to coax the hips open. Really trusting into your hips. Last full breath here. Inhale to reach back. Leg is nice and straight. Just find your alignment. Back knee should be under your back hip. Exhale to fold in. Inhale to lift. Just one or two staying at the back here before we do that forward pulse. Inhale to return to the front and exhale. Inhale to reach back, exhale to fold in. Inhale to look up, exhale to reach forwards. Inhale to reach back, exhale to fold in. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to soften. Inhale to slide back, exhale to fold in, inhale to lengthen, exhale forward. This will be our last one. Inhale back, exhale to fold in, inhale up, exhale forward, plant your hands, lift up into the back leg and step back into your plank. Pausing here for a full breath, inhale. Exhale, inhale, piking through the hips, and exhale, finding your down dog. For another full breath here, inhale, and exhale. On your next inhalation, lift both your heels, and we're gonna wave through the spine as we bring the weight over those wrists, and then soften through the lumbar spine, soften the chin, soften the chest, push back with bent knees and then inhale continue the waves so let's do another three in your own time this will be one 
exhale, push the floor away, soften through the chest. And then inhale, second one. Coming forwards, exhale, pushing away. Last one, inhale. And exhale. And then steadying the body, inhale, looking forwards and walking your feet to the front of the mat. Exhale, folding in, just a moment in the ragdoll. Maybe swaying from side to side. Maybe coming to still the body, bringing your weight into the balls of the feet. Really feeling the pressure ease over the spine as the weight of the head draws you down towards the floor, tilting your hips up towards the ceiling. On your next inhalation, roll up vertebra by vertebra, maybe keeping a micro bend in the back of the knees. As you come up to a standing position, inhale to reach your arms up above you. Exhale to bring your right hand over the left wrist. Keep facing the front of your mat, I'll face the side. Taking, so your right hand over your left wrist, and then take your left leg out towards the side and stretch into the side body here as you uh, pull on your left wrist with your right arm. Look down towards the floor, towards your back toes. Inhale to lift up and exhale other side. We'll do it twice on each side. Inhale to lift up, exhale towards the left side. So right fingers engaged over the left wrist. Inhale and up and exhale out towards the left side. Left fingers engaged on the right wrist. Inhale to the center. Exhale to open the arms out. And I'll keep facing. Maybe I'll face three quarters. Might be the easiest way to see. Lifting up the right leg. We're going to do this kind of cross body movement with the right leg. So imagine that kind of rag doll feel as you move your right knee to one side and let the right foot follow it. So let's do that once, twice. And then from there, draw the right leg out and bend into that left knee as you come into a deeper side body stretch. Inhale to lift up. And as you do that, bring, keep that leg nice and high, engage through the knee and exhale to bring your left elbow over the right knee and then leverage of the outside of the right knee with the left elbow to look toward the right side. And exhale, release, open the arms out, lifting up the left leg. So let's just practice it once or twice. One side seems more coordinated than the other, and that's fine. You also have to kind of let your arms and upper body move with it. So let's just do two now. So one, I'm using my balance today, and two. And then behind you, left leg out towards the side, bending into the right knee, stretching into the left arm, looking down towards the floor. Inhale. Come up with the left leg, right elbow over the outside of the left knee, left foot engaged, keeping the right angle with that leg, and then leveraging uh, right elbow on the left knee to look towards the side. And exhale, release. One more time on each side. Just two here now, so one and two movements. Open out. Stretching the right side body. Inhale, lifting up the right leg. Left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Looking out towards the right side. Exhale, release. Arms out. Inhale, left leg comes up. 
that like weird fun movement <laughs> out to the side and stretching the left side body. Exhale, inhale to lift up the left leg. Exhale, right elbow over left knee. Like an elevated, twisted chair. Exhale to release. Bringing both feet together at the front of the mat. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold forward, tilting from the hips. Inhale, straight back, straight legs. Exhale to step back into your plank. Lower your hands, coming into your chaturanga or using your knees, coming through a low cobra or an up dog. With the inhalation and then exhale, let's find our way back to down dog. Another deep full breath here, inhale and exhale. Inhale, looking forwards. Exhale, walk your feet to the front of the mat. Fold the body in. Inhale to rise. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale, let's fold forwards. Inhale, straight back, straight legs. Bend your knees, jump or step, up to you. Chaturanga, up dog, or maybe using your knees, gentle cobra. We all meet back in down dog. Another full breath here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, looking forwards. Exhale, jump or step. Fold the body in. Inhale to rise. And exhale. Third one, inhale. Exhale to fold. Inhale, straight back, straight legs. Bend the knees and exhale, jump or step. Inhale, up dog. And we all find our way back to down dog. Exhale. Two deep breaths here, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Let's do our fourth Serena Moscow. So on your exhalation, finding your way to the front of the mat. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale, fall down. Inhale to rise. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, let's fold. Inhale, straight back, straight. Legs, bend your knees, jump or step. Inhale, up dog or gentle cobra. We all meet back in down dog. Exhale. Full breath here, inhale. And exhale. Last breath here, inhale. And exhale. On your next inhalation, right leg goes back and behind you in the three-legged dog. Close your right hip slightly to get your hips perpendicular to the floor and keep pressing into your mat. As you push the floor away, but also soften through the neck and elevate through the spine, tilting your hips up towards the ceiling as much as you can. On your next inhalation, Right leg comes forward to the right upper arm. Exhale, kick back. Inhale, right to left. Exhale to kick back. Inhale, right to right. Exhale to kick back. Inhale, right to left. Exhale to kick back. Third, each side. Inhale, right to right. Exhale to kick back, inhale right to left, exhale to kick back, 
Inhale, come through the Jayua, nice smooth movement as you hug your knee to your heart, placing your foot between your hands when you're ready, rising into the high lunge. Arms, palms pressed into each other above your head, back knee super strong, back heel nice and strong. Find your strength here, deep full breath in. And as you exhale, lower the back heel, let it hover, bringing your hands behind your bum. Inhale to lift, three of these. Exhale, hover. Inhale to lift. And exhale, hover. Inhale to lift. As you exhale, draw your right hand down on the side of the right hip and exhale to reach towards the right side with the left arm coming into a banana shape with, this, with the top of the body, stretching into the rib cage. So really reaching towards the right side. Exhale, inhale. As you exhale, bring that left arm back behind you. Inhale to lift up the right, and then exhale to slowly lower your left heel behind you and then come into a crescent on the open side. Exhale to sweep the right hand back. Inhale, lift up the left hand, coming into a crescent on the closed side. Exhale, softening through the hips. One more breath here, inhale, and exhale. Inhale to lift the body up and then sweep your left hand back and bring your right arm to your heart. High Skandasana. And then exhale to sweep back into your revolved crescent. Three times, so this will be our second. Inhale. And exhale. Last time, inhale and exhale. This time as you inhale and lift, sweep to your skandasana, but keep it nice and low as you bring your left elbow on the inside of that left knee, and then reach your hands forwards and soften your head, stretching as far as you can in a diagonal line, so towards the back right Sorry, the very back left corner of your mat. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to lift your head up and sweep your right hand on the outside of your right hip. And then press your feet into the floor, press into the glutes, and come into a wild thing at the back of your mat. Exhale to soften and sweep back to where you were in this kind of diagonal skandasana. Inhale, sweep back, wild thing. Exhale, sweep to the diagonal, and this will be the last one. Inhale, and exhale. This time as you sweep, come right over to face the back of the mat and straighten into that left leg, right foot, Becomes, comes up a meter behind the front left, 45 degree angle. Let's find our pyramid pose. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, pulsing with the breath. Exhale, soften in. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale, soften. Last one. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, soften. Inhale, plant your right hand on the inside of that left foot and press your feet into the floor as you engage your patella. Engage through the glutes and squeeze between the thighs and then tilt to look towards the left side in a revolved triangle, but with your hand on the inside of that left foot, not on the outside. Of course, use a block under your right hand if you need to. Really use your mula band here to come into a deeper twist. You should feel full engagement on the outside and the deep 
hamstring and the outside of the thigh. Last full breath, inhale, exhale. Inhale, keep the right hand exactly where it is, looking forwards, lift up your right foot, and then exhale, sweep it out towards the left side in a parallel line to where your left foot is. Lift up with the left hand. Your left knee is bent, right leg is straight, exhale. Inhale, lift that leg up again. Plant it back, exhale. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, sweep it out. Inhale, to the back, exhale. Last time, inhale to lift. Exhale, to sweep it out towards the side. Either stay here, or if it's in your practice, or it feels right and you want to, inhale to lift up that right leg, and engage through the right leg as you bend into the right knee. Place your left hand to the floor, so swapping sides, and your right hand reaches for your right foot coming into the sugar cane balance. So even if the right hand doesn't meet the right foot, you can still bend into the right knee and engage the right glute to bring the right heel towards the right glute. So you're still creating the shape, even if your hand isn't there meeting the foot. Last full breath here, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and then bend into your left knee, and on the exhalation, you're gonna sweep that right foot forward, sweep your body forward, and inhale to come up into your warrior two, facing the front of the mat. Right leg is the leading leg. Check your alignment, make sure you've got a a good steady line with the feet and then draw the pelvic floor up and under, draw the belly button in and roll the shoulders back and down. Nice and roomy in the shoulders. On your next inhalation, sweeping back into your revolved warrior. Exhale to sweep forwards, side angle. Inhale, revolved. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, find your humble or revolved. Exhale. Last one. Inhale, reaching back. And exhale, reaching forwards. Two options. One is to bring your right elbow on your right knee, left arm overhead. Second option, reach for the floor with that right hand as you open the torso out and really fire up the outer blade of the left foot, reaching through the fingertips. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Either stay here or sweep, find the bind to sweep your left hand behind you, sweeping your right hand underneath that right um, th uh, thigh and hamstring, and open your chest out to draw your elbows backwards and draw the shoulders backwards as well. Look up towards the ceiling. Last breath here, inhale, exhale. Inhale to straighten into that front leg, finding your um, triangle variation with a bind. Another full breath here, inhale, exhale. Keep opening your chest and keep trying to make a straight line with your body, so drawing the torso back towards the right leg. And then exhale to release that leg, release your hands, and roll over with your back foot, planting your hands on either side of that front leg and sweeping it back and behind you, elevating up towards the air. In the three-legged dog, your right leg is lifted. If it serves you, come onto your elbows from here, pressing your hands in towards the floor, maybe moving your left foot closer towards your face. If the three-legged dolphin <laughs> doesn't feel right for you, bring both your feet to the floor and just practice your conventional dolphin. But if it feels right to have that leg elevated, maybe you are doing a few donkey kicks, trying to come into your forearm balance.
finding your edge, either donkey kicking or maybe just holding the dolphin. When you're ready, bring both feet to the floor and come into your dolphin plank. Last breath here, inhale, exhale. Inhale to walk your hands up, coming into the plank. Exhale, inhale, exhale, heels to the right side. Inhale to lift the left arm up. Finding our Vashti Stashana like we practiced at the beginning. So either your left foot is forward and you're just maintaining your shape here, or if you could, you're lifting up your left leg and first reaching fingertips forwards, finding your balance. And then when you exhale, kick back and get the diagonal shape with the body. Inhale, elbow to knee. Exhale to kick back. Inhale, elbow to knee. Exhale to kick back. Inhale, elbow to knee. Last one. Exhale to kick back. Inhale, lifting left leg up, transferring it forwards, softening the right knee and foot, bringing both hands forwards, finding your alignment, and then pressing only the right hand into the floor and come into a nice soft, almost recovery pose as your left hand presses the left knee away and you telescope your ribs up towards the ceiling. Let the hips be soft, just feel the beating of the heart, connect with your breath. Maybe if it's in your practice, lifting up that right leg and opening the chest out. But it's quite a passive melting posture. Another two full breaths here. Inhale to draw left knee in towards your heart. Hands to the floor. Exhale, step back into your down dog. From here, we're going to flow through three spinal waves like we did at the beginning. If you feel like you want to rest, of course, come into a child pose now or at any time. And then meet us back in the down dog when we've completed them. So if you're joining me, lifting up onto your, your heels, inhaling, looking in towards your belly, waving forward. Exhale, bend into the knees, offer the chest forward, push the floor away. And bringing the head in last, inhale, second wave. Exhale. And inhale, third wave. Exhale. Down dog, either staying here for two breaths, or if it serves you, come forward into a vinyasa. Chaturanga, up dog. And piking through into the down dog. Perfect. We're ready to do the left side. On your next inhalation, lifting up the right leg, three-legged dog, find your alignment. When you're nice and steady on your next inhalation, left knee to left up arm. Exhale to kick back. Inhale left to right. Exhale to kick back. Inhale left to left. Exhale. Inhale left to right. Exhale. Inhale left to left. Exhale, inhale, last one, left to right, exhale, inhale, hug that leg in, round through the spine and slowly transfer it forwards between your hands, get your balance and when you're ready, come up into your high lunge, palms together, engage through the back heel. And on your next exhalation, lower your back knee. Inhale to lift. Three pulses like this. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. 
Third pulse, exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale, left hand goes on the outside of the left hip and reaching your fingertips towards the left side. You can almost make the press into the right ribs away from you, very pronounced. Last full breath here, inhale and exhale. Sweeping that hand, sorry, <laughs> keeping your left hand, no, that's right, sweeping your right hand backwards, lifting your left hand up, and then slowly lowering your right knee and coming into a crescent shape on the open side of the body. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, sweeping left hand forward, lifting up your right hand and find your crescent shape on the closed side of the body. Engage your right glute. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to sweep forwards, lifting into the back heel and find your high lunge at the back of the mat. Exhale, returning and opening in your crescent. Inhale, sweep back, exhale, sweep forwards. Inhale, last time, like this, high lunge. Exhale, back to the front. This time as you inhale and sweep back, keep it nice and low, coming into a low skandhasana hold and maybe reaching your fingers out in a diagonal shape to the back of the mat. Head close in towards your upper arms, left leg nice and soft as you reach out. So a sense of expansion in the left leg as the right leg takes the weight. Last breath here, inhale and exhale. Inhale to look up and bring your left hand on the outside of the left hip, pressing your hips up towards the ceiling and coming into your wild thing. Exhale, sweep to that diagonal skandhasana. Second time, inhale, wild thing. Exhale to close and sweep back. Third and last time, inhale, wild thing. Nice back bend. And exhale, sweeping this time, keeping the momentum as you sweep right around to face the back of the mat and straighten into your right leg. Left leg comes, foot comes to a 45 degree angle, about a meter behind the right. Setting yourself up for pyramid pose, hands on blocks, on your shin or on the floor. Patella engaged and tilting your hips towards the front of the mat as you engage between your thighs. Exhale, let's pulse in. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Last pulse, inhale. And exhale. This time as you inhale, plant your left hand to the floor on the inside of the right foot and then lift up with your right hand as you come into the revolved triangle, the back of your mat. Remember, both of the feet have to be super strong to hold your balance here. And you can also press into the floor with your left hand to help your balance if you feel that you're battling with that. Try and tilt your chest to the back, to the right side as you face now as much as you can, neck is soft. Last full breath here, inhale, exhale. Keeping the hand, the left hand where it is, inhale to look forwards and then shifting the weight right forward into the right foot, slip your left foot out towards the side in a horizontal line to the right foot. Keep opening your chest towards the right side and then exhale to step back. Inhale forwards and out. Exhale to step back. Inhale forwards 
and out. Exhale to step back. This time as you inhale, lift up your left leg, transfer right hand to floor, open the left hip more towards the ceiling, keep the left knee engaged and bent, and then if you can, find that left foot. Coming into your sugar cane balance. For this, it's important to feel like you have a melting heart, so you really want to soften through the chest and find an arch in the upper back as you press the floor away and also reach through your, the top of your head so you get more elevation through the leg and more out of the posture if you include that heart melting feeling in the upper back and chest. Exhale, inhale, and then exhale to step the left leg far right towards the front of the mat and sweep forwards, nice sweeping motion to come up into your warrior two, left leg leading, facing the front of the mat. Take a moment to find your alignment. Try and relax in the upper back and shoulders. And when you're ready, let's begin with our pulse. So windmill, inhale back, exhale forwards. Inhale, reaching back. Exhale, forwards. Inhale, back. Exhale, forwards. Inhale, back. Exhale, forwards. This will be the last one. Inhale, back. This time finding either the side angle with elbow on knee, or if it serves you left hand on the inside of that left leg on a block or on the floor. Full breath here, inhale and exhale. If you did it on the one side, find the bind here. On the other, maybe encasing your right wrist in your left hand. Keep opening the chest. Look up towards the ceiling now over the right shoulder. Exhale. On your next inhalation, straighten into that left leg, coming into the triangle bind, variation on the trikonasana. Last breath here, keep opening the chest towards the left side, inhale, exhale. Inhale, bend into the knee, release your hands, and looking forwards, Place your hands to the floor and sweep, sweep the left leg back, coming into your three-legged dog. If it serves you, come onto your elbows now, into your dolphin. Either just holding the dolphin with both feet to the floor, or if you did it on the one side, donkey kick and practice your forearm balance on the other. Remember, strong fingers and lock the shoulders. Strong upper leg. Kicking a few times or finding your balance. And then feet to the floor as you come into your dolphin plank. One full breath here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale to stack up into your plank. I'm just going to walk forwards because I was a little bit off my mat there. Stay with it. One breath. Inhale. Exhale. Heels out to the left side. Inhale. Come into your Vashistasana, bringing your right leg forward for balance. Right foot on the floor if you need it. Or inhale to lift up the right leg. Exhale, inhale, exhale, kick out, diagonal shape. Inhale, knee to elbow, exhale to kick out. Inhale, knee to elbow, last time, exhale to kick out. Inhale, knee to elbow, sorry, <laughs> exhale to kick out, that's the worst, I'm so sorry. Inhale, left, right leg up and transfer it forwards. And now we can relax, 
left foot to the floor, left knee to the floor. And then pressing your left hand into the floor, press your right knee away. Melting pose, soft pose, regain your breath. Maybe you want to lift up your left foot, right hand in the foot. As you telescope your ribs up towards the ceiling. Last full breath here and exhale. Releasing that foot, inhale to bring that leg back towards the center and then step back into your down dog. Either go straight into your child pose or join me in three pulses of the spine. Inhale to lift up, rounding the spine, looking in towards the belly. Exhale, bend the knees. Soften the chest, push back, inhale, exhale. Third one, inhale, exhale. This time, inhale, we can all make our way onto the mat, belly onto the mat. So either you're doing that from child pose or you're waving through the spine with me. Bring your hands underneath your head into the crocodile pose, let's just regain our breath. Heels going out, toes pointing in, and you can look out to left or right side, doesn't matter. We'll swap halfway through. We'll take about 10 breaths, looking in each direction. Pausing to connect with the sensations, to reconnect with our practice, with our body, to ensure that it's mindful movement. These softer poses are like an anchor in your practice. A moment where you collect yourself, draw yourself back within, turning the gaze inwards. And they indeed become bookmarks in your pattern of resilience. Each time you soften and rest, you create a juncture in the flow and allow yourself to be able to bounce back and restart again. When you really look out to the other side, just asking yourself what's different through the next stretch, looking in the other direction. Tuning into the minute details. And then when you're ready, looking forwards and keeping your um, left hand pressing in a hand in towards the right, bring your left elbow under the left shoulder and then lift up the right leg as you reach back for the right foot and exhale to bring the right heel down on the outside of the right hip. And you can look back towards your right um, elbow. This is a half frog stretch, very good for stretching through the quad and for sciatic nerve release. It's also a twist and a kind of a cross body pose. But it's quite extreme on the knee. So if you had previous knee uh, difficulties, then make sure you don't press down too hard through the heel. Exhale to release that um, foot from where it was, but keep hold with the foot and then lower your left arm, engage through the left arm and the left foot and inhale to come up through the boat, balance. Exhale. So our half boat, inhale, so engaging through the fingers, engaging through the toes, kicking back through the right leg. In fact, that's the re really the strong, really strong part of the pose. Last breath, inhale, and exhale to lower. And now we can do a cross body version on this side. So pick up your scarf or your strap and 
collect it into a scarf or a strap uh, shape and then sweep it back and behind you and around that right foot. And then hook your toes backwards so you have like a leverage so the strap doesn't sweep off the foot. And then bring your hands up above your head holding onto the strap. And you can hold on first with both hands as you inhale, start to kick into that leg and walk your hands back onto the strap. Just walking a little bit higher, getting some height as you kick back and open up the chest. And then if it serves you, exhale and just hold on with the left hand. So right leg, left hand only and then reach out with the right hand and lift up with the left leg. Another two breaths, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Lower and slide that foot back to release the strap and the foot out. And we're gonna do the other side. So have your strap close by, hand towards the left side, right elbow down beneath right shoulder, lifting up the left leg, reaching back for the left foot. Exhale to press the left heel down on the outside of the left hip, lifting up through the left elbow and looking back towards it. Press both hips evenly towards the floor. So you really want to Get the upper body twist. Don't want to fall out to the right side. Last full breath here. And then exhale to release. First version was hand to foot. Right hand forward, le right leg forward. Exhale, release all air from the body. And then inhale to kick into the left foot. Right hand and foot reaches up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale to lower. And let's find that strap or scarf. And from the front, sweep it back and behind you. And then find the foot. And remember, once you have it over the foot, my toes are in the way. Once you have it over the foot, remember to flex the foot so the strap doesn't slip off and then bring it forward and over your head. And then starting with both hands, start to just walk them backwards on the strap as you press into the top of the right foot on the floor and kick out with the left leg finding a bit of height, finding your edge, and then lifting up, opening the chest. Lovely stretch through the chest and underarms and triceps. And then when you're ready, holding on only with the right hand as you release the left hand, left foot engaged, right hand, so yes, left foot engaged, left hand engaged. And when you're ready, inhale to lift up into the crossbody half boat. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale, lower. And then release that leg, sweep the strap down but keep it there because we have the last iteration of this which is to lift both feet together so you want to hook both feet behind the strap make sure you flex both feet hands out towards the side and then inhale to bring the strap forwards over your head and then you can walk your hands back Taking a deep inhalation, coming into your back bend. Pressing your chest forwards, pressing your throat forwards. Leading through the strength of the legs. 
last full breath inhale and exhale slowly lowering the same way you went in come out move the strap out to the side press your hands into the floor lift the chest up and then keep the knee super wide because you don't want to bend into your back now you want to keep it straight and then draw the hips back towards the heels and a nice extended child pose Make sure you lengthen over the back of the neck. Maybe closing your eyes and connecting with your more subtle breath now. We're coming towards the close of our practice. Inhale to lift your chest up. Exhale to sit back on your heels. And we can do a variation on the sage twist um, as we're doing all this cross body work. So feet can go out towards the right. Both of your knees go towards the left and then sit back on your bum. So feet to the right, knees to the left. And then try and sit up nice and straight, still facing the front of your mat. Exhale to sweep your right hand over the left knee and then start to inhale and lengthen through the spine and exhale bringing your left hand to the floor behind you. So you're twisting away from your feet, looking over the left shoulder. Maybe you are hooking your left hand on the top of the right hip. So now you will be tilting over towards the right hip. And the right side of the body sorry the left hip and the left side of the body and that's normal and fine but make sure you counter resist your right hip the opposing hip to the floor so you want to activate making through the hip making the bum the right bum cheek heavy pressing it to the floor And then maybe countering your gaze, looking over the right shoulder, two breaths. And then releasing your hands. And let's swap over to the other side, coming forward and then feet out to the left side, knees to the right side. Find your alignment, sit up nice and straight. And then left hand to right knee as you exhale. Inhale to lengthen and exhale to come more deeply into the twist, either hand to the floor or hand over that left hip. Looking over the right shoulder. Remember to make the left hip heavy now, counter resisting to the floor. And then exhale, count your gaze of the left shoulder. Last breath. And release your hands, sweeping your feet forwards. And you can move your bum to the middle of the mat so you have space behind you. And then roll down vertebra by vertebra. And for our last pose, we have Yogi's Choice. So one option is just to draw your knees to your heart and hug your legs in towards your back and rock from side to side. Second option, there's three, is to place feet in front of the bum, feet hip width apart, and inhale to lift up into your bridge pose. You can either keep the spine nice and straight or you can tuck your arms and shoulders underneath you or third and final option is to go up into the full wheel if it's in your practice 
So hands alongside the ears, fingers pointing in towards the hips. Inhale to lift your head up. Exhale, head to the floor, find your balance. And then inhale to elevate through the chest, pressing the floor away. Back is nice and supple and open from our crossbody flow and our back bends. Three breaths wherever you are. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Last breath wherever you are. And exhale. Slowly coming down. We all find our way into our Shavasana. So finding your way. Feet flopping out, heels in. Palms on either side of the body facing up. Maybe something warm over your chest, perhaps something soft under your knees or the back of the head, whatever feels right and good for you. And as you lie back, close your eyes. And just take a moment to tune into the sensation of eyelids meeting eyeballs. And just become aware of that light and soothing touch. And let that touch be an invitation to relax into the eyeballs now and into the eye sockets as though that loving touch permeates from the retina and from the front of the eyeball back into the socket, softening and relaxing. And then imagine as though that socket sinks back into your skull, into your brain, bringing that softness and that calming touch with it, actively relax into the brain. And then let the skin over your face melt, melting outwards and down towards the floor, releasing all tension from the forehead, from the temples, releasing any tension from the jaw, any tension in the mouth, feeling that skin melting down and over the ears, relaxing right into the ears. Letting the skin all melt down the side of the face and into the earth. Breathing is steady and subtle. That soft and monotonous rhythm. The gentle rise and fall of the belly. And as the body is still, so is the mind. Let each exhalation be a step deeper into your practice of relaxation. As much as we work on postures and movement and breath and strengthening and poise, so too we work on our relaxation, our ability to let go an intrinsic part of the cycle of resilience. Being able to take rest, being able to restore and rejuvenate when you need to, when your body needs to, when your mind needs to. Absolutely essential in the cycle of resilience. Embracing this moment. Conscious relaxation.
And you ready, gently start to move into your fingers and your toes. Bringing life back to your body. And if it feels good, stretch your arms above your head and take a lovely, long, luxurious, deep breath in. Lovely, long stretch. And then maybe keeping your eyes closed to keep this lovely, soft energy and in a way that is safe and right for your body. Come up to a seated position facing forwards. I invite you to bring your hands in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra and to join me in the universal vibration of Om. Taking a deep breath in. In gratitude to all of our teachers, past, present, and future, as all their teachings weave into our lives and into our practice, into our body, and into our minds. Thank you. And in dedication to our loved ones who could not be here with us and who we so wish we could hug and hold and be near. Namaste.